As an instrument pilot, how can we improve our flight maneuvers under the hood? What's happening, M Missouri Nation? Jason Schapper here. Welcome to the Instrument Pilot Podcast, brought to you by our number one rated online ground school, m0a.com. Check it out, m0atrial.com. Actually, if you'd like to take a free two week, no strings attached trial of that course, no credit card needed. In the meantime, to subscribe on YouTube, uh, like us here on Facebook as well, and of course on iTunes. Thank you for all the reviews and subscriptions and listens there. It means the absolute world to us. And uh, you're, just, you're the oxygen to everything that we do. Thank you for that. Hey, Instrument Pilot Podcast today, and I want to talk, we're in this series, Flight Maneuvers for Visual Learners. The majority of you probably self-identify, I'd imagine, as a visual learner. I know I certainly do. And so far in this series, we talk about steep turns. We talk about adding flaps in slow flight, odd topic, but I guarantee you've been there, done that. Um, like how, you know, it doesn't sound so challenging until you actually go to do it. And now I wanna take an instrument perspective on this because although you'll struggle to find your flight maneuvers in the ACS for instrument, you'll find that so many CFIs and DPEs for whatever reason, still like to see the private pilot maneuvers done under the hood. And you've done these before, by the way. You did them as a private pilot, I would imagine, during your three hours of simulated instrument time that you were required, that you needed there. And you're probably gonna start your first few instrument lessons doing exactly that. But one thing you realize quickly is that steep turns, slow flight, stalls under the hood, they pose some unique challenges, don't they? Um, it's not the easiest thing to do. And I wanna work you through really today how we can improve that because early on doing, especially maneuvers under the hood, I, would, I got nauseous doing steep turns outside, let alone steep turns under the hood as well. I remember I suffered from nausea very, very early on and for quite a while uh, in my flight train, something I had to overcome. Thank goodness I actually, never actually vomited, just continued to build up a tolerance. Um, to motion sickness and flying in Florida in July and August, which is just brutally hot, as you can imagine. So with the topic here, flight maneuvers under the hood, let's start with some advice. Um, whether it's steep turns, especially in slow flight though too, I'll come back to stalls in a bit, don't chase it. It is so, and this is going to benefit you when it comes time for your, your actual like shooting approaches and everything else. Don't chase it. It's so easy with steep turns to, to focus on one thing because everything's happening so quickly and you're focused on your heading and you're blowing your altitude. You're focused on your altitude, you're blowing your heading. Use your bugs, use altitude bugs, heading bugs, whatever it takes. Use all available cockpit resources to help you because you don't have those same visual cues outside. Tiny changes, don't chase it. You know, it wasn't until my instrument doing steep turns under the hood that I realized that if I am sinking in a steep turn, it's not always necessarily that my nose is down. I might just have too much bank. Or if I'm climbing, I may have not enough bank. You saw this demonstrated two weeks ago with the using trim during steep turns. It's to compensate that, that vertical for that vertical and horizontal component of lift and to balance all that out because you, are, you have to lift is like a bank account. You only get so many lift dollars until you get a return check, right? And a return check in aviation comes in the, in the factor of a stall usually, right? You only get so much or, or just sinking like that. So with only so many lift dollars to spend, we utilize trim to make sure we invest those lift dollars in the right departments to maintain level. Now you can still use the trim technique like you saw two weeks ago in that video um, under the hood. It'll work in that case. It's a, it's a little more little more going on with hands and trying to find the trim wheel under the hood because I realize you're, you're, that hood or those foggles, it's tough to see and get your hands around the airplane as well as compared to being in the real clouds. And again, I say this every podcast, every instrument podcast at least, but you all know there's such a difference between the foggles, the hood, and real IFR. But, you know, it gets his head in the right direction. Practice precision. Don't chase it. 
Now with slow flight, the same is true as well. In slow flight, when you are forced to only look at your instruments, this notion of I pitch for airspeed, I power for altitude will become so clear to you. I pitch for airspeed, I power for altitude. Again, when you understand that, I'm telling you, it'll be, it'll be a game changer that just unlocks your, your full flying potential with that. Um, and as you see, oh, I'm sinking, I'm gonna give it a little power. Oh, I'm climbing, I'm gonna take out a little bit of power. Because once you get that pitch right, and you're focused on that with your instrument scan, once you get that pitch right, everything else works, everything else falls into place. Now, heading change is gonna happen. Remember, like I always say, it's called slow flight for a reason. Baby your way into that slow flight, baby your way out of that slow flight. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the turns, baby your way into the turns, baby your way out of those turns. Really work and focus on that. Now, Here's another point to all of this, and hopefully you have seen this, you see me demonstrate um, what we call our perceptual learning modules. Uh, and this is some gamification, uh, basically a, um, yeah, it's a game that we, that we created inside the online ground school. If you're not a member, go to m0atrial.com. Once you're logged in, click on the resources and click on perceptual learning modules. And what it does is it flashes an instrument panel in motion, six pack or G1000 in front of you. It starts out as fast as six seconds and says, what'd you see? Oh, I saw a climbing left-hand turn. And every time you get it right, it speeds it up five and a half seconds now. You know, 5.25 seconds next. And if you get it wrong, it slows down. And we go all the way up to a second and a half where you've got to scan your instruments with that much precision. You've got to scan your instruments that quickly. But that is how the instrument environment really works. Your look at your instruments, you need to scan it, digest it, know what's happening, do something about it. And then when you do something about it, you got to scan, digest it, repeat the process. I'm looking outside to see, did I see any lights outside? No, nothing just yet. I'm over here now. I'm down on my eye. You're just constantly moving those eyes and you need to be able to scan, interpret and digest and then implement what you just learned from your instruments like that in a second and a half is the goal. And that's what these perceptual learning modules do. They add the gamification, they bounce between steam and glass, which is a lot of fun and adds in what we call some mixed practice. Again, it's part of the aviation mastery method. Um, and it really just helps solidify. It's difficult, but the best kind of learning is durable learning. You can go to the gym all you want, but if you want big, strong biceps, you're not gonna lift the two and a halves for, for five years and get the biceps or the arms that you want. You have to challenge that muscle. And it, learning works exactly the same way. Learning that is difficult is durable and it lasts. And that's where you need to focus. And that's why these perceptual learning modules start out easy and get harder and harder. And you're going to make mistakes, but you're going to then learn from those mistakes as well, which is uh, just fascinating. So again, m0atrial.com. Even if you just want to check out just that, I'm all about it. You just hop in there, check out that. I want you to see it. And then hopefully you think about us when it comes time for the written test for the check ride. Uh, just for getting your ground school out of the way. I mean, I know so many people that are in a 141 program and still use M0A to, to supplement their learning. It's phenomenal. So don't chase it was the first tip. Practice things like your perceptual learning modules. And then the last little thing here is all about your stalls. Stalls are scary enough. In fact, um, next week's video is all about overcoming a fear of stalling. Um, stalls are very, very challenging visually. Imagine them under the hood. I had such, who had a fear of stalling? Let me know in the comments or the ratings, whatever. I had such a fear of, I hated it. I was in a Cherokee 140. Cherokee 140 has that Hershey bar wing. And let me tell you, when that Hershey bar wing, I, I think Piper's a great company, but man, that Hershey bar wing, when it's done flying, it's done flying and it, it breaks hard. Any Cherokee 140 pilots out there, Hershey bar wing pilots out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That thing just breaks hard when it's done flying. So that, that, that didn't help my fear. Um, two three mics was pretty docile uh, in, its, in its stalls. But doing them under the hood then, whew, with nausea on top of it in August in Florida was just not an enjoyable experience at all. It was a very challenging experience. So just like I encouraged you in your private pilot days to start small. In fact, those of you who have a fear of stalling I encourage most people, hey, power on, stall. 
Do it at 1700, 1800 RPMs to start. Just baby your way into it before you work all the way up to full power. The same is true under the hood. Can you just baby your way into them? Learn what you're gonna, what you're gonna, what it's gonna feel like under the hood. That attitude indicator may, may tumble or act up at those lower power settings till you get that throttle in there and it starts behaving like it should again. So you gotta watch your heading, you gotta be mindful of your footwork. There's so many little avenues with all of this and that is why I like, especially early on, baby into your stalls, especially the stalls under the hood because they pose such a unique challenge. So what are our tips for flight maneuvers under the hood? Practice, go for precision, don't chase it. If you find yourself overcorrecting, and you, this will make sense when you start flying localizers and everything else, you'll realize that overcorrecting doesn't work. You pick a heading, you reel it in to intercept it. You don't, you don't chase it, you don't chase it. Practice the PLMs, perceptual learning modules, and remember with stalls, start small. Flight maneuvers are gonna make up 1% of your instrument training but you gotta get through them, and they, they are foundational in building a great instrument pilot. My professional opinion with that. Anyways, I do hope you check out the online ground school, m0atrial.com. Thanks for the thumbs up on this video, the subscribes on YouTube, the likes on Facebook, and the reviews on iTunes or Audible, wherever you're watching this. Thanks for being such a blessing to myself, uh, my wonderful uh, wife, Magda, this great team here at m0a.com if there's anything Anything all we can do uh, just to be a light, to be a blessing to you, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have an abundant rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see ya.